Corey Holcomb. Um, I seen you name him during Breakfast Club days as your Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. as a, and he's as still one. on it. He's still on and, it. And and like, but you guys kind of over time, people go through stuff. Like, do you think you guys are ever? You know what I mean? I hope so. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. It come down to it, like, your fans, something that they done that kind of moved you. Did they have a tattoo on them of you? Or, I would or, hope not. Oh, you never know. You know, I've seen listen, it. This, this, I seen a dude the listen, other day put a dude on his leg. Listen, this is what I mean when you know I go, I you know, uh, and I'm, I'm not a real big football guy. My, my, my extent of knowledge of football and enjoyment comes from playing Madden. But, <laughs> but as far as, like, really watching the game, knowing players, knowing plays, I, I'm not part of the cult, right? But, but dudes that get like the players' names and faces and the team logos tattooed oh, yeah. on them, and and more importantly, when I look on social media, dudes that get in fights in the stands, I'm going, these players don't know you. They, they a lot of the, a lot of what y'all fight for <laughs> and this tribalism, the sports tribalism. A lot of these same dudes, they go to dinner together, they mm -hmm. hang out with each other. They're friends. They don't feel the way about each other that you do about the opposing teammate mm -hmm. and team. Calm the f down. And a lot of times, I'm, and again, my dude, listen, because of who I am and what I do, I meet so many people both in sports and entertainment where I go, oh, sh that's so-and-so. In my mind, I know I'm supposed to know them. I don't expect them to know me. And then they go, Ari Spears, yeah. I'm a fan, bro. Yeah. Now I'm giddy inside because I'm like, yo, this motherfucker know me. Yeah. Like my boy is Michael Irvin. And when mm -hmm. I used to do the, yeah. when I used to do the best damn sports show and Mike was on for like a couple of months, and I didn't I didn't know Mike prior to that, but when we would do the uh the, the briefings before the taping to discuss what we were gonna discuss. Man, I was cutting up in that room so hard. Mike would fall out of his chair and be like, this nigga crazy in my head. I know this nigga. So I know Mike. I know Shaq. I know certain players. So, and even then, I'm not tattooing your image on my body. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, we dap it up. It's all love. But I know them. So they not going to disrespect me or act a certain way where I go, man, if a lot of you dudes who are fighting these in the stands were to meet your favorite player, they probably sh on you. Mm. They won't give you the love you want. They may not take that picture. They may walk off and treat you like you ain't shit. And you got this nigga's name on your back. And you, you, you willing to mad die as for this ever. nigga. He might even fuck your girl if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. And you worshiping this nigga? Yeah. Now I'm not saying all of them are like that. Cause I'm sure there's, there's some pretty cool dudes. But I'm telling you man, I've seen shit where diehard fans be like, yo so and so. And that nigga look down on them like they ain't you see that? That's got to hurt. You see what happened with uh with Chameleon there when he met your boy, Michael Jordan. Jordan yeah. See but what listen, I mean? But listen. It happens. It happens, but listen. You might think, because that's Michael Jordan, he got billionaire, da 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 he might, Everybody's susceptible to a bad day. Mm -hmm. He might have gotten a fight with Juanita. I'm like, that bitch. And here come Chameleon there. So, you know, because I've also, and, and, and that's why when I've asked people who have known Mike or met Mike, I go, yo, is he really an asshole? And I've had people go, man, he is the coolest dude. Really? And I go, really? But, but that's everyone, a millionaire but, story. Yeah, that story. But, that's, but oh everybody God, that's says that about him, that he's like that. But a lot of people also say he's not like that. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. And, I, and I'm just saying for from, from me, sometimes you have to meet people at the right time. Right time. Or sometimes people don't approach you the right way. I've had people come up to me and say wild shit to me off the cuff. And it's like, nigga, you don't even know me. You just met me and that's your first approach? Wow. Now I'm mad. Or I might just not be in a good mood that day. I had a fight with my baby mom. You know what I mean? Now ain't the time. But for the most part, I try to make sure that any time I walk out the door, I put on that right. face. Because you know, when you famous and you hit the public, you kind of belong to the public. And that's how I always felt as a um, consumer of a celebrity's work is the fact that I understand that you're a human and you have bad days and all of that, but you signed up for this. This is what you, cause so whenever you walk out the door, people are going to come to you. Can I get a picture with you? Can I get your autograph? Can I da da da? And you're supposed to have that great spirit because no matter if you have a bad day, if you had to go on stage to perform, you're going to do what you're supposed to do on stage. So right. why don't you do the same thing in front of your... Fans, because well, these fans are going to buy it's, your it's, stuff. It's a little different because when you go on stage, the people that have bought the tickets, they're there. Mm -hmm. They've they've made they've bought them. You, their money is in your pocket. Mm -hmm. When I'm walking down the street, your money ain't in my pocket. 
So I'm not obligated, you know, to do anything. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I don't have to do anything. But I'm but I'm also again, that's why I'm just going. I kind of get it. It's it's comes with the gig when you go out into the public. You can't especially, you know, the the more famous you are, it's to be expected. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to act accordingly, but you don't technically have to. You know, right. well, I got to ask you about um, and, and you don't have to answer it or you can because um, <laughs> you have a long history of stuff. Corey Holcomb, um, I seen you name him during Breakfast Club days as your Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. As a, and he's as still one. on it. He's still on and, it. And, and and like but you guys kind of over time, people go through stuff like do you think you guys are ever you know what I mean? I hope so. You see what I'm saying? I, I because so, this, I, this, I love seeing y'all chemistry this is what I'm before talking about. that. Yeah, you know what I'm this saying? This is what I'm talking about when I say growth. For me to sit here and go, oh, because we had a beef, he's no longer on my mind. That's that's some female shit. That's vaginal uh, reaction. He's still there. It don't change who he is as a comedian. He's still one of the coldest in the game. And yeah, I would love to hopefully one day we could work together because that's part of the growth. If I was to sit here and hold that grudge and go, man, I ain't gonna ever f- that nigga. And he might not ever want to f- with me, and that's fine. But but you know. Again, let's for the betterment. Let's better for the betterment of us. You know, let, let's figure shit out. Yeah, because like I said, you you one of those guys that like I said, you you history. You ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I look at like I talked to I talked to Country Wayne yesterday, but those guys, the newer comedians. I ask this question to everybody, and and I'm not gonna continue to ask it because I seen an issue when I came in the game. Me and Bubba Dub talked this morning too. These internet guys that come in the game the way they're coming in now. Uh, when you look at the Desi Banks, the Marco, the Funny Marcos, all of them, which I deal with the, the, those newer guys, like, and I deal with a lot of the guys that mm-hmm. come from the going to those uh, comedian halls, like you was in Harlem and really bringing it. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys didn't have to go through that. <coughs> but um, when you see them and you see the way that they're doing things now, how do you embrace it as a comedian that came from that, you know, from that rugged grind? You know, as long as the as long as you have substance and you got staying power. You know, uh, I mean, the landscape has changed. You know, uh, the grind is different because of social media and these platforms. So I don't knock the hustle. Just just stick around. You know, as long as you're putting out quality work and, you, you know, work that has substance and meaning and you stick around, that speaks for itself. Everything else will take care of itself. You know, it, it's, it's so hard to make it in this game. How you get in, just get in. Yeah. I don't care if you go through the basement, climb over the roof coming through a side window however you get there get there wow you know and and, and uh country wayne netflix special a lot of people he got some backlash on it i watched it i've been to his shows so i support him i know that he can bring out uh people that's 15 or, or 16 all the way to, to 80 i seen the, right. the, the crowd response i seen him set 3700 people in those seats in houston when he invited me to the wow. show and um you know him and mike blessing all us we hung out um, yeah. I know he got it far as that go. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people say they he got some backlash on What was the backlash? It was the fact of he wasn't good as, you know, some people. You had Janae Sayers saying that that, com- that Netflix special wasn't just, you know, on 10. You know what I mean? Oh. So And you're going to get, because all of Did this stuff. Did you see it at all? No, I didn't know. Yeah, but all of this stuff is, is a, you, you can have your opinion on how long we're up. It's all subjective. subjective. Yeah. So, so, but. He's sitting 3,700 in these seats and he's doing Netflix hey, specials, man. He getting hey, money. You know what hey. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.